So Tinker Tailor, it's been great this year to see how uh, the project's evolved over a second year. We've really managed to embed the homes across the whole school. We're on the way down at the moment with a number of teachers that have been involved from different schools and we've got different presentations to share and different bits of kit to demo as well. It's been really nice this second year because we've seen the benefits that we've been running with the clubs, so the kids who have been involved in the clubs. Um, we've seen that kind of, the, the skills that they're learning starting to bring it into the, into the classrooms. I think we have learned as teachers that we can be brave with our teaching, we can change things, we can take risks because the results that we're getting from children are really good. We started the year with an immersion event where we brought together teachers uh, and academics from the university, our engineering heroes, to share uh, what engineering habits of mind mean to them. Uh, so we've got this angry head teacher that we need to convince over the life of this project that engineering has both a place, a relevance and a resonance in primary schools. We're just in engineering all the time in nursery. I think it's really, really easy to get engineering in with the little ones. And the children are not afraid to, to, to join in and to build. They're not afraid of getting anything wrong. I think the networking um, possibilities are phenomenal. <clears throat> so I get to work with like-minded people, see what other teachers are doing. And the only way that we're ever going to get to outstanding is by sharing practice but also um, seeking effective practice as well. I don't have to work out what's going to happen at the end of the day. They can find out themselves and uh, through failure um, it's success. To be able to engage with um, expertise at the university, engineering heroes and um, other specialist educators has been fantastic. If we're going to really teach engineering better, we need to understand how engineers think and act. And then we need to think how we might teach them that get the children who are going to become engineers, they already are engineers, all kids are proto-engineers, how might we teach them in ways that are going to be likely to develop the kinds of habits of mind that we want? If this kind of approach to the teaching of engineering is going to take root and really fly, then we need to influence head teachers, especially at primary level, and leadership teams at secondary. But head teachers are critically important because they are managing almost impossible dilemmas. Engineering is full of engineering grand challenges. We hear of the 14 global grand challenges. All right, we couldn't tackle those in a primary school. Now we think we might be able to tap into a few, but our grand challenge, it had to be our sort of last phase of this project. We wanted to put what we'd learned into practice into practice. So our, our grand challenge is to be part of the European City of Science Robot Orchestra, which is infiltrating the whole of the North West at the moment with people making robot instruments. This is really important because at the moment we have a, a, an education system that is narrowing the curriculum, it's narrowing the accountability measures, it's very much about a small set of academic standards and we want a more expansive education, we want young people to develop creativity, problem solving skills, critical thinking skills, analytical skills, all these kind of things that would come out of some really interesting ways of teaching and learning uh, that this project is trying to develop. I suppose as well the language, is the language going to be helpful for everybody or is some of the language a little bit difficult to operationalise perhaps? Oh, it's been really inspirational I think, uh, just hearing so much about how the teachers have engaged with EHOM um, and not just um, the ones who are teaching science or DT or whatever, but it's been so, you can see how it's applicable across the curriculum. Um, what's amazed me when I've been talking and having my conversations with the teachers and doing these in-depth interviews that you know, talks about, um, you know, you get an English teacher who's really enthusiastic about it, or an art teacher who can see the relevance of it. And I think this idea about EHOM being an integrator across the different subjects, I think is really powerful. <laughs>